Seika starts off by creating a fog to surround them and tries to restrain him in metal but he breaks out then uses shadows to attack Seika. He decides to summon a minotaur that goes on to one-shot Kyle. Seika goes over to him but a curse appears on his body. Kyle conjures a barrier to block out the curse but for some reason Kyle still seems to be passing on. He tells Seika his final words to Mabel then goes to heaven. But Seika decides that he will use his full power to return Kyle from the underworld and begins his chant but Yuki comes forth to remind him that he promised not to stand out in this world or he'll end up being used again. After the tournament Seika took Kyle's body and refuses to become a royal guard after he's declared the winner. He carries Mabel to a hill where they bury Kyle. Seika reveals her brother's last words to her and she begins to grieve for her loss but Mabel reveals that she has nowhere to go. So Seika invites her to join the academy. They return to the school, where Seika meets with the principal and tells her about everything he found out. She says that she knew that he would win the tournament to bring back Mabel because she can see how strong he is and tells him to become her role model. Seika returns to his harem and sees that Mabel has changed her hair color. He reveals to them that his father gave him a mission in another kingdom and invites Yifa to come along. The crown prince suddenly walks into the hall and comes over to greet Seika but proves that he has good taste in women and gets rejected like you in high school. They go to speak privately and the prince explains that the dragon who has been protecting their people for centuries has suddenly began causing damages in the kingdom so he requests for Seika to investigate what caused it. They begin to travel to his kingdom and after nine days they arrive in the nation of Hysteria. They go outside the carriage and sees the dragon flying in the distance. It suddenly heads towards them when a burning pussycat is summoned and charges at the lizard but it decides to fly away. The tiger attacks Hifa so Seika goes to cool it down but the pussy jumps at his face. As a chain suddenly binds the cat while a summoner appears and dispels it. The prince scolds him for what happened and reveals that he is a mercenary that was hired to send the dragon to heaven. Seika says that he should find another way to deal with it but Zack steps up and confronts Seika. So he warns the summoner to not summon any more creatures around him again but the prince breaks them apart and sends Zack away. They go to the library and begin researching everything about the dragon. Seika finds a book that reveals that the dragon was hatched from an egg raised by the queen and lived peacefully with the people. Until one day when another dragon came to the city and they banged to give birth to baby dragons so the dragons began attacking farmland to feed their children. But since the female dragon passed away long ago there shouldn't be any new dragon spawns. Seika decides to go up into the mountain to see what's really happening. The next day, Seika leaves Yifa behind and heads up into the mountain. He travels until he encounters the dragon. It walks up to him and uses a fireball but it fails so he flies up and tries to use tackle instead but misses. Seika summons Isaac to come down and sing a lullaby to take down the dragon allowing him to summon a net so he can trap it. Seika goes over and sees that the male dragon laid an egg. He reveals that it's a trans dragon that became female because it couldn't get some dragacy and begins taking care of its egg. Seika decides to go and tell the prince what he found but the dragon doesn't have another babysitter on hand. Back in the kingdom, Yifa walks with the elf and she begins telling her about the benefits of being with the prince and shows her how happy all the other girls are to be there. The elf reveals that the prince have fallen in love with her and asks her to be by his side. Yifa is brought to a balcony where she sees the prince. He makes his men appraise her worth and offers to pay whatever it costs to have her to himself. Yifa tells him that she wants to stay with Seika so his servant advises him to force her to accept because it would be better for her. He commands the guards to restrain her so she tries to fight back but the elf placed a magic blocking barrier around them. She gives Yifa a paper cut and they try to force her to sign the contract but the dragon suddenly appears with Seika writing it to save her. He tells them what he found out and calls Yifa over to him to help babysit the egg then they fly off through the clouds and head back into the mountain. They land at the dragon's nest, where the tiger suddenly attacks them but Seika easily captures it. Zack comes out from the forest and reveals that he was after the dragon's egg all along. Then sends a tiger at them but Yifa uses waterfall to get the pussy wet. Zack commands his whole guild to charge at them so Seika burns the puss like a STD. Then the dragon comes from behind to block their escape route allowing Seika to capture the mercenaries and Yifa to disarm the summoner. 
They return to the prince and tell him what the mercenaries tried to do. Seika explains to him that because the queen long ago hatched the dragon egg it protected his kingdom, so he should do the same with this egg. But the prince refuses to do it and asks him to send the dragon to heaven instead because he needs to solve this problem now or he won't become the next king. Seika refuses so the prince places him under arrest. Then begins walking over to Yifa and offers to make her a citizen of his country but Seika slaps his hands away and begins scolding the prince for being a piece of shit. The elf steps up and goes over to Yifa to ask what she wants to do. So Yifa denies the prince harder than your crush on prom night. The elf apologizes to Seika and tells him that all charges will be dropped. Then takes Yifa outside and takes her hand to give her new elementals to use and wishes her goodbye. One year later, Seika invites all his harem to meet his family for spring break. They head to his home where he introduces them to his family. His oldest brother greets them along with Yifa's father. His older brother Glide comes over and tells Seika that he has been enjoying his time in the army but he wants a rematch with him. Amu tells him that she will be his opponent instead so Seika decides that if he can defeat Amu then he'll fight him. The battle begins with a sword clash. Amu begins overwhelming Glide until he fakes a magic spell and disarms her. She asks to run it back but he goes over to Seika for their duel. Fiona suddenly comes over to watch their fight and predicts that he's about to get his ass beat so he cancels the duel with Seika and introduces the princess to everyone there. They walk through the hall where it's revealed that Fiona is the offspring of a priestess and the emperor. They go into the room and the princess explains that she will be staying with them for a couple days but when she returns home she would like Seika to escort her. They head off to dinner where his father congratulates him for dealing with the dragon in hysteria and his stepmother tells him to write home more while he's away. Which surprises him because she never cared about him before he left. They go to their rooms where Seika sits and speak to Yuki. But Amu suddenly opens the door and luckily he wasn't working out his right arm. She lays on his bed and tells him that after she graduates she's planning to become an adventurer so he says that he will join her party and they will go on many adventures together. The next day, they show the princess around the city but Fiona suddenly grabs Seika's arm and takes him over to a food stand. Glide buys everyone snacks and the princess asks how people fall in love. So they tell her that in stories it happens when someone saves your life. They continue their tour and the princess suddenly rushes under a construction site where the rope conveniently burst away but Glide and Amu saves her life. Seika goes over to thank them but Fiona seems to be disappointed so Seika decides to buy a present for her. The Riz God tie her hair into a ponytail for later on and shows her how she looks. They return to the mansion where Seika's oldest brother tells them to have a safe trip escorting the princess home. They sit in the carriage where Glide teases Seika for having motion sickness. As a sudden explosion occurs so Seika goes out and see that they're surrounded by bandits. They begin aiming at Seika but he summons clouds to block all of their attempts to penetrate him. The bandits decides to charge at them so Glide comes out and commands his knights to protect the princess. Fiona asks Seika to take them alive so he casts a spell to make vine spawns and bondages all of them. He goes back to the princess and she tells him that she needs them alive for evidence against her enemies. Seika reveals she can see into the future and knew this would happen, but he warns her that smoking them would have been easier. She reveals that they won't do anything until the next attack begins but their next attack will never come so they'll wait until they reach the capital. They arrive at the princess's home where she thanks them for escorting her. Glide calls over Fiona and wishes Seika farewell so he wishes both his brother and the princess goodbye. But before she leaves she tells him she will always be on his side. Back at the academy, the principal invites him to represent the student body as the welcome ceremony so he decides to accept. While walking Yuki points out that this will draw attention to him but Seika begins questioning if he was a coward for not wanting to stand out and decides to start acting like a normal person going forward. Outside the city a group of demons gather to invade and make the hero past tense. The captain tells them that once they head inside they will slaughter the students until the hero arrives so they can protect the demon race and return home to their families. The demons teleport inside the city and finds themselves in a fog. He sees students and attacks but finds nothing. 
The other demons begin wandering the fog together and the gypsy compliments the rabbit on being so strong but he says that she's stronger than him. She reveals that her powers are useless in peace times, so she always just slept but coming on this journey gave her purpose and will make her parents proud of her. Something suddenly runs past so he sends his dogs to find it but they return and gives him a paper. The ogre walks through the school seeing Noon but he's suddenly attacked by knives as Mabel walks in to greet the monster. She begins fighting with the ogre but he dodges his attack and cause a dust cloud to counter her but she evades him, then goes in for a strike that misses so he catches her blade to disarm her. Mabel throws knives at the ogre to make gravity magic comes out to bind him but he easily breaks out and charges at her to end the fight. But she becomes an origami. The goat god meets up with the captain but all the other demons are somehow being drawn to that location. They reveal that everyone they try to slay has turned into paper so the captain decides to leave but a greater demon catches their attention. Seika tells them that everyone they fought were fake but Mabel who gave the ogre a good fight. He tells Seika that he wants to fight him and gets his mind blown from Seika's voodoo magic. The gypsy flies up and unleashes her evil eye to avenge her ally. But it has no effect on Seika so he pulls out the reverse Uno card and makes Manda use his evil eye to give her an invitation to the afterlife. The rabbit gets enraged and summons his monster to attack but it gets heartbroken as the rabbit shows himself to tame the snake. It goes over to the silly rabbit and shows him the inside of his mouth. Seika laughs at him for trying to tame his summon and the captain begins freaking out because his allies are getting slaughtered. The goat says he will distract Seiko while he escapes but the captain wants to be the bait instead, so the goat can survive and warn the demon race about him. It's revealed that the captain can see people's abilities and he explains that Seika is the demon king. Seika tells them that he is protecting the hero so he begins freaking out that the demon king is fighting for the humans. He tells the goat to go as Seika gets ready to smoke them. The captain tries his best to defend against him but he's easily overpowered. However the goat managed to barely escape. He rests on a tree and suddenly begins bleeding from the chest as he passes and curses the demon king for turning against them. Seika's happy that he annihilated the demons but Yuki comes out and says that he's doing things that shouldn't be possible but he dismisses it. Mabel comes over and tells him about the ogre she fought but he tells her that he's gone and makes her promise not to tell anyone what happened. At the school ceremony, Seika gets ready to give his speech but knights suddenly burst through the door. They come over to Amu and accuse her of the crime of slaying an emissary sent by the demons but she's confused about what they mean so they decides to take her into custody. Seika heads to the principal's office and asks why people want to smoke the hero. She tells him that many people would like to see her gone but she's doing her best to get Amu free and warns him to not do anything bad. He heads outside her office and tells his remaining harem to wait until the principal can get her free. In the night he summons forth the great Ryu into this world. But Yuki warns him that if any of the higher ups sees him he will end up just like his past life. But Seika reveals that he will leave no witnesses this time to identify him. She continues to try and persuade him but he threatens Yuki to make her leave. And hop on Ryu to go into the skies until he reaches where Ami is being kept. Seika begins spreading his origami over the entire kingdom and looks through their eyes until he finds her in the dungeon. He walks in from above and heads towards the guards. He tells Seika to stop and blows his whistle to alert his allies nearby. They shoot pokers at him but Seika summons a storm to block all their attacks and uses his talismans to rock their world. He breaks through the door to see many more victims and tells them to leave but the knights stay to do their job and attacks the intruder. So he decides to cook them inside their armor and summons a shinigami to make sure they'll never see their families again. The guards tries to run but he continues to slaughter them relentlessly until he arrives at the dungeon where Amu is being held. She warns him that if he frees her both he and his family may be punished and tells him that she will stay inside until she convinces them that she's innocent then. He reveals to Amu that she's the hero and tells her that they will smoke her because they fear her strength. He offers to take her away but Glide suddenly approaches him from the shadows. He asks Glide if he's ready for their duel but Fiona comes in to stop everyone from getting massacred. He asks why she wants Amu to become a hashtag and the princess reveals that long ago when the kingdom was small they needed the hero to save them from the demons. But now they have great armies that is far more powerful than any hero. 
And now just by existing the hero can start a war so the demons have been sending assassins after her to stop conflict from appearing between them and keep the peace that they have found. Fiona goes over and begs Seika to walk away and leave Amu to them but he refuses to do it. So Fiona sends Glide to call off the guards and tell them to follow her. She leads them outside and shows them a carriage filled with all their necessities and points them towards the free city where the mayor will help them. Amu thanks Fiona for the blanket and she reveals that while in her cell they came by to give her words of comfort and the blanket to stay warm. She sends them off but before they leave Seika decides to go over and summon many doors to release his origami and cast Rene Rebirth to revive all the innocent people that he massacred. They head to the carriage and begin traveling to the city to begin their adventure together. But when they arrive in the castle Seika finds the rest of his harem waiting on them to arrive. Like for a cat girl, subscribe for a waifu, and remember to stay swifty! Ooh.